Hey everybody, welcome to my video on trade protection. I'm going to pick up where I left off in my last video when I was discussing import and export markets. We're going to look at import markets and what happens if you put a tariff or a quota. Now, as we learned last time, in an import market with free trade, the world price is below the local equilibrium price or the autarky price. And so consumers buy the goods from foreign sellers. And the sellers have to compete with the low world price. And the result of this is that sellers lose a lot of their surplus or their profit. And that has a lot of spillover effects. Uh, people getting laid off from work, being unemployed, collecting government money, kids being raised in poverty. Like whatever kind of story you want to paint behind it, you can. But if we're importing and our businesses stop exporting... That means, yeah, producers are losing, and the people who work for producers are losing. And so, we're going to introduce the idea of a tariff, and then we'll do a quota too, just for good measure. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a tax on imports. Now, remember, the reason we like trade is because of this big triangle over here. That is surplus that would not be had in the market without trade. Trade makes society overall better off. It just has a really unfortunate redistribution effect where our sellers lose out a lot with imports. So let's put a tariff on here. And the way the tariff's going to work, we're going to add a price to the world price. We're going to tax imports so that when we buy something from overseas, you have to pay the price tag plus the tariff. And the result is that the world price effectively is now higher than it used to be. And I could label this line the world price plus the tariff. The world price itself hasn't necessarily changed. The world price plus the tariff, though, is higher than it used to be. Now, at this higher effective world price, the suppliers, no longer having to compete with a world price, but with a tariffed world price, can supply a higher quantity. The price goes up, the quantity goes up. That's the law of supply. Demanders, the price went up for them too, and so they demand a lower quantity. Now the result of this is that there will be fewer imports than before. Imports with a tariff are less than the original imports. Let's take a look now at what this does to our consumer and producer surplus. Because we're already done with the whole, like, what's it do to imports question. The gap between QDT and QST is your imports with the tariff. When we raised the world price, both quantities shifted along with the new price. So let's shade in our consumer and producer surplus. Let's see, here's our price that the consumers have to pay for imported goods. So all of this stuff, below demand... Above price is consumer surplus. Notice that before the tariff, all of this was also consumer surplus. But since we raised the price, that stuff is no longer consumer surplus. The price is higher. We're buying less. We're getting less surplus per unit. All of it. Let's look at the producers. The producers used to only have this triangle. But now as they sell more goods at a higher price, they also gain this area. And so producer surplus increases. That means our trade protection is working. It helps these local businesses. Okay, but what about all of this space in here? This triangle, this rectangle, this triangle. Well, let's see. Let me highlight this rectangle in yellow. Tariff revenue is equal to quantity times tariff is equal to quantity times tariff, where the quantity is the quantity that we're importing, the gap between QD and QT. So the base of this rectangle is the Q, the quantity that we're importing. The height of it is T, the tariff itself. Quantity times tax dollars is the total tax revenue. So that's not lost surplus. It's just been transferred to the government. They're collecting it as surplus now. So we'll call that tariff revenue. 
Now, the last bit, these two triangles, those aren't going to anybody. Not to producers, not to consumers. Those are really weirdly shaped deadweight loss. You see, the market was producing a ton of surplus because every transaction where willingness to pay was greater than the world price, the transaction happened. And every transaction where the world price was greater than marginal cost, the transaction happened. But now we have meddled with the price and we have pushed out some good transactions. So we have helped our producers. We've harmed our consumers. But the harm to the consumers outweighs the benefits to the producers. Now, a complicating factor here is the fact that in some cases, the benefits to these consumers are spread out widely. And so the benefits aren't very big to any one person. Whereas the benefits to these producers might be more concentrated. And so for them, this makes a bigger difference than it does for these people. But in any case, if you engage in trade protection, what you do though, is you make the market less efficient. And so if you're going to do that, you should make sure you have a good argument to explain why, because in pure dollar terms, it's doing more harm than good. All right, last thing now. On the left, with a quota, we're going to get the same kind of result as with a tariff, except there won't be any tariff revenue. When we do a quota, we limit the amount of imports. We say that imports cannot be greater than a certain amount. Now, one way you could model it would be to pick some length, which is a quantity. So you'd say a thousand cars or a million cars or something like that. Some maximum quantity, the most we're allowed to import. And you take that quantity and you bring it up here into the import region and you find where the demand curve and the supply curve are that far apart. Now, when you do that, that's going to help you see how much people are willing to pay for these imports. You see, we have pushed demanders out. The demanders that are going to remain are going to be the ones with higher willingness to pay. How high? This high. There's my price with a quota. And what are we going to get as our result from this? Well, we're going to get the same kind of look at imports. Imports are going to fall. And they'll be equal to whatever we set our quota to. Assuming it's a binding quota. But then, wow, that looks a lot like the other graph, doesn't it? Let me show you where it's different. Consumer surplus will be everything above the price with the quota. And below the demand curve. Producer surplus will be everything below the quota price and above the supply curve. These will still be deadweight loss. But this rectangle is not tariff revenue because no one's collecting money on it. It's all loss. And so a quota creates a bigger inefficiency than a tariff. Because not only are you reducing the transactions in this market, but you're also not even collecting any revenue on it. And so... Uh, they both can have the same effect on imports, but a tariff has the benefit of collecting some additional revenue. Either way, though, if you're ever engaging in trade protection, you will be preventing transactions that benefit both buyer and seller, which means you will be preventing transactions that increase surplus. Any trade protection you do, as I said a minute ago, will reduce total surplus and make the market inefficient. That's not to say you shouldn't do it. It's just to say you should have a good reason. Anyway, I hope that is helpful to you. And if not, I apologize for wasting your time. But thanks for watching anyway, guys. Good luck. Let me know if you need something extra on this topic. Thanks for watching and see you next time.